Hello everybody and welcome to another amazing video of DIY investing. This is an important update because Bitcoin is finally breaking out. We have spent over two months inside of this range waiting the point of breakout one way or another and we finally got the confirmation and this is going to the upside. This is exactly what we wanted to see as long term bulls because this perfectly sets in motion the next higher high that I've been talking about as we make a blow off top heading towards 40 and 50k. I truly believe that this is about to be the most profitable move of the beginning of this cycle and anybody that has positions is prepared right now early. Is is going to be the ones that profit the most when this move takes off. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And with that being said, let's jump right into this amazing video today. guys here we are to start off today's video and as you guys can see we are seeing a huge buyback taking place inside of Bitcoin this is exactly what we wanted to see after we've spent so much time kind of consolidating right here around this range now the price action has been super super choppy all throughout here and we've been you know just slowly accumulating before we pick a direction every time we had an attempt at a breakdown we pretty much instantly got bought up this was support we had a false breakdown here we had another one right here, but the main false breakdowns were this one and this one. And both of those were instantly bought back up. So anytime you see the price consolidating at a level that's going to be either resistance or support, you're going to see it go a couple different ways. And we can kind of see the two differences inside of our price action throughout this entirety of the consolidation. At resistance, we saw pretty much the exact same thing, where you're getting these quick flushes at resistance and then they're pretty much just instantly getting rejected back down. And we could see this one right here being almost like the final one. And you're going to see this at the end of a cycle or a trend, I should say, where the trend's been going a certain way. In this case, it was going to the upside. We had this big move to the upside. And then this is where we start getting distribution. Now, whatever way the market fakes out to, whether that's to the top of the resistance like this one did, or whether it's to the bottom of the support, that can give you an inclination as to the direction the market's going to be moving. Up here, when we made this big attempt at a breakout, we got clear above the resistance. This would have constituted as much as a breakout as far as what we needed to see. However, we can see that right after that move, we got a sell off and then this lower high came and pretty much took us right back below the level and then that was what stitched in you know, our lower low. So we ended up seeing deviation from that. When we had this big attempt at a breakout, we got well above the resistance. For us, to back, for us to immediately sell back down and make a lower high, that shows exhaustion of a trend. And that's what pretty much led us into this big capitulation type of move. And so in the same way that we were looking at that, we saw kind of two of these sort of things. And it behaved to the downside, right? where you could pretty much draw a similar sort of thing, but the reason why we're not drawing the resistance here and marking it the same as distribution here is because of the fact we just came off of a big sell-off, right? So whatever move we just had, whether it was a big move to the upside or a big move to the downside, that's gonna be the idea as to whether it's accumulation or distribution. Because we had this big move to the upside and then we started having this consolidation up here, that shows distribution because it's taking place after a sustained uptrend. The fact that we saw the same pattern taking place to the downside is pretty much just the same thing, it's just reversed and we're seeing a bullish accumulation as bears are kind of capitulating off of this support. And so, as it stands right now, we held support, we actually flipped resistance and the prior highs as new support, and now we're seeing continuations. And so right now, Bitcoin's looking very, very bullish, and this is what's getting me excited because we've been waiting to, you know, try and determine whether we were gonna break out of this sort of consolidation and whether or not, you know, we were gonna have to come all the way back down in here. And I was talking to you guys that if we ended up losing the support of this mid-range right here, I said that if we end up losing support and this becomes resistance, you know, we don't really have another support until pretty much all the way back down in here at the point that we just consolidated so much time on. So to see us actually hold support, to see us get this strong buyback, it's everything that we needed to see for bullish continuation. And so as it stands, it's looking like Bitcoin's going to be taking another run back up to about 30K. And more or less what we're going to be looking at is just the prior highs of this entire consolidation. This is our most important area on the chart since we already broke from 25K, retested as support and got continuation. Once we get above this 30K level, really 31,000 to be more specific, I think that that sets in motion our final blow off top. And I believe that that's going to be taking us to here, either 40,000 
or all the way to the top of this move, which is personally my primary target, and that's $48,500. So I am actually anticipating that once this next higher high is stitched in, once we get above 31000 that's where we're going to start really seeing this big type of uh, blow off top price action. We're seeing it in ETH. I shared with you guys some charts the other day when we looked about when we looked at the price of ETH and I kind of drew this comparison here. And to me, this is pretty much exactly what's happening. We're about to get that next big breakout. And I don't know what the exact price action is going to look like, but because ETH has spent so much time inside of this ascending triangle, you guys need to understand how ascending triangles actually break out, and especially one that's coiled this tight into the corner of its apex. So for when this thing finally does get that breakout, I do believe it's going to happen very quick, right? And that's something that we kind of saw even at the beginning of this trend, how you know the consolidation can take a really, really, really long time. But once it starts breaking out, they can just make large moves. Now keep in mind this was you know closer total to about 700 days of accumulation. And we're only sitting at a little over 425 days at this point. So there is a little difference here. But keep in mind, guys, that we're not anticipating this. We're not trying to break past the all-time highs right now. All we're looking for is the move up to the top of this lower high, the 3,500. And then from there, I am anticipating we'd have a correction back down fairly close to the same $2,050 level at the top of this resistance, but I don't think that we're gonna necessarily come all the way back down and land onto that level. Most likely we would end up bottoming around $2,500. That's kind of what I would guess. And then we should make a consistent beginning of this new parabolic trend. And so I'm not really expecting we're just gonna go breaking out into all time highs, even though a lot of people are expecting that. You know, I am not expecting this. I'm not expecting that we're just going to do something like this. I think we're going to take a long period of time, you know, the rest till basically midway 2024 before we're sitting at this point breaking out into new all-time highs, right? So that's kind of what I'm looking at inside of the market. But something else that gives me a lot of encouragement, and I think it should give you guys a lot of encouragement, is not only are we nearing the point of breaking out, not only is Bitcoin kind of done what we needed to see at the bottom of this accumulation, once Bitcoin breaks out of 30K, like I said, it's looking like we don't really have any resistance until 40 and 50K. And with Ethereum, it's pretty much the exact same thing. ETH doesn't have resistance until 3K and $3,500. And so those are the primary targets that we're going to be watching for. Both, both of these markets, because of the length of time we've spent accumulating, I believe that once we actually break out, the move to those levels is going to happen very, very fast. And so you know, if you're gonna take profits, be prepared to do so already. You know, if you're just planning on holding, understand that, you know, a lot of these altcoins are gonna get hit in a lot of different ways and, you know, they might erase every bit of profit that you made and you might even come back even lower than you thought you were gonna go. And that's just the way that the beginning of these uptrends work. So, you know, if you're up a lot in something, Try not to get too greedy. I mean, there's a lot of factors at play. I know I always tell you guys to focus on the long-term trend. And so if you don't feel comfortable enough with you know taking profits and you just really want to focus in on the whole entirety of this move, then do that. You know, by all means stick to your own analysis. But I'm just saying that what is gonna happen after this next move is gonna be some type of big correction. And the more we're prepared beforehand, before the move even takes place, it's so much easier said than done because greed, emotions, everything takes over at the peak of the move, whether that's upside or downside. So I like to tell you guys now so that we can just keep it in mind. So once this starts to take place and we get overly emotional and a little delusional, we can keep ourselves sane with taking profits. We're playing these moves level to level and we have obviously consolidated below this entire um, support level, I guess you could say. This was our main consolidation in the bull market. The all-time highs were resistance as well as uh, support throughout here. And then also on our first lower high, the first sell-off of our bear market, we pretty much kind of stopped right here on that same level. For us to be consolidating with this resistance, once we break out, there isn't another level until $3,500. And then you could actually make the argument that we would be overshooting and going to 4000 And that's something that can definitely happen depending on the move, which is why I kind of drew this example right here. So like I said, guys, we're playing level for level. If you're expecting that we're going to make a move like this, but you're not anticipating a correction. To me, that's just delusional. And that's why I'm bringing this up right now is before it ever even takes place, before the breakouts even happened, we know what to look for moving into this next move. We're already prepared. We have a plan. And now all we have to do is just trade it. So now 
let's talk about some of these altcoins because in my opinion this is something that's got me super excited for you know this coming next move just mainly because of the fact everything that we're starting to see with bitcoin breaking out and i do believe that the earlier accumulations that we've been experiencing over the last you know three to six months in altcoins a lot of them look to be creating very profitable setups. Now, Arbitrum is one that I really believe in. I haven't bought any of this, although I do have a bunch of tokens just from the airdrop itself. You guys know I'm really bullish on Arbitrum as a whole, the entire ecosystem. I've talked about a lot of different altcoins inside of the ecosystem that I'm invested in. And so as we're talking about this today, I think that we're now anticipating <clears throat> a much bigger move that's gonna be taking us to all-time highs and even into new all-time highs. This just looks like your classic example of a new altcoin that gets added to exchanges, hasn't really done anything, but then is about to go into its first move. And the reason I say that is because up to this point, all we've had is an ABC correction. The A wave was much more extended. <clears throat> the A wave was much more extended than wave C, which doesn't necessarily mean a lot, but it can mean that there's a lot more buy support because of the fact wave C was actually smaller. Um, now, when we're looking at this, after we finished this ABC correction, that finished our first ever sell-off. Anytime a new altcoin gets added to exchanges, this is gonna be the thing that they do. Oftentimes, they'll get added, they'll make a listing pump, whatever that looks like, and then after, they make this big sell-off, and it's usually a big ABC like this, They'll break out, make a one wave, and then they start a brand new cycle. And this is, you know, the same setup that I talked to you guys about with Terra Luna, same setup I talked to you guys with Ethereum back in 2015 and 16, same setup we talked about with many different altcoins, right? It's, it's a setup that I personally look to trade because I've made a lot of money buying this exact setup. Now, when we're talking about this, we're pretty much seeing the exact same setup all over again. We saw the listing pump, we saw the ABC correction, and now, in the same way, we're seeing our first one wave impulse. One, two, three, four, and five. And I do believe that we finished our correction right here. A, B, and C. And you could draw this a couple different ways, either like that or like this, but it doesn't necessarily change anything. Regardless, it's still just the same correction. And so when we're looking at this, we can see that this was our first area of support here. It was support throughout our wave A and B. It was support inside of wave three and four. And now after wave five and our ABC correction, we're finding support at the bottom of wave C. Obvious to tell this is the most important area of support inside of our entire chart. So for us to be now consolidating back onto that as trending support and finishing our first one wave impulse, I do believe that this is setting us up for a bigger three wave impulse next. So when we're looking at these things, Fibonacci is one way that we can kind of, well, it's really the only way that we know of to show resemblance and uh, relationship inside of Elliott wave cycles. So when we're looking at this, because we finished wave one, what we're looking at is a minimum target of the 1618 because our next cycle is wave three, right? So this is a wave one impulse, wave two correction. We're getting ready for wave three next. And we'll have a new set of impulse waves, one, two, three, four, five. We'll have a new set of those going into this wave three, right? So the question now becomes, where are we gonna end up topping inside of this three wave impulse? Now, based off Fibonacci, we have to go to at least the 1618 because the 1618 means that we are at least the same size as our one wave. A three wave impulse can never be smaller than wave one. So that's the way that we would know and guarantee is by using the trend based fib because this will actually measure it out. You go from the bottom of the move to the high, back down to the uh, mid range point, wherever the bottom of wave C takes us, that's where you stop it at. And then as long as we go up to the 1618, then this is a confirmed three wave. So when we're looking at this, we have a minimum target of about $1.82, which is perfectly with that all time high. So I do believe that wave three will probably go maybe a little bit higher than this. We could go all the way to the 2618, but generally with a lot of these early cycles that haven't done anything, they'll make this next big breakout, they'll go into new all time highs, they'll kind of consolidate inside of wave four on top of those all time highs and then they'll finish up with one more impulse after that. And I can't tell you guys exactly how crazy Arbitrum's gonna get. I can't tell you if we will even make it look exactly like this. All I'm gonna say is we have a minimum target of $1.80, and we do have a chance of overextending it inside of this next move. Based off the way the cycle looks, I do think that this one's gonna get pretty impulsive being a wave three, and so um, we're sitting on support. I think that this is a definite one that we wanna be looking at, because the reason I'm sharing with you this 
is every one of these on the uh, charts today that we're going to be looking at are all in different cycles. They've all been added at different points and they all have different narratives attached to them. So it's interesting to look at old altcoins, new altcoins, kind of midterm altcoins, because every single thing is going to be creating its own pattern and we are able to actually dictate what's going to happen through those. So next up on today's list is going to be OP or optimism. Now, one of the big things that I've been talking about recently has been stacking one waves. And this is another example of one of those. Now, we had a one wave here, and we've had a one wave here. And both of these are pretty much just creating the beginning of our trend, right? We're seeing higher highs and higher lows as we're more or less just accumulating sideways until Bitcoin starts picking up. Now, I'm, I really like OP because it's pretty much the exact same as Arbitrum. It's just its own layer two. It does its own sort of things. And, you know, they're completely different in their own way. And so I don't want to make it too much. This is exactly the same as this. But OP is one of those I really do believe is going to have a big cycle. And so 50 to 100x opportunity is there depending on how much money comes into the market, which I think is going to be more than most people are expecting. Now, when we're looking at this exact setup, one of the big things I like about this is kind of the same thing for Arbitrum. These are early altcoins that haven't done anything, but they're telling us, you know, what's going to be taking place. And so I'm not anti I'm not writing off the potential where this ends up even dropping a little bit more and maybe even comes back down to retest this support once again, trending support. Because the reason I say that is mainly just because this has token unlocks. And so there is going to be some inflation, but I don't think that that should be something that would concern us too much because short term token unlocks can knock the price down. And in the short term, that does kind of suck. So, I mean, if you're leverage trading, you got to, you know, be aware of those things. But if you're holding for the long term, I wouldn't worry about that because the biggest mistake I ever did in the last cycle was sake, uh, selling my Solana too early just because I heard of token unlocks. And yeah, the market did sell off, but I should have just immediately bought back in on that dip and I didn't. And then that was when it went up, you know, another 200 X from my entry. So I would have made a lot of money had I just held that. And it's just little things like that that are going to be harder and harder to continue to hold through. So I like to tell you guys these things because at the end of the day, everything I'm telling you guys is something I've learned from, from a mistake because we don't really learn that much from our wins as much as that sucks. The more you could learn from those, the better, but you know, most people just don't. And that's just the way I am personally. And I think that's the way most people are hardwired. Now this one, we just got rejected from our descending resistance. And so as it stands, this kind of looks like a lower high. Even if we bounce up until we get outside of that, this thing could actually lead us for a much bigger sell off. And I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen, but with us not able to actually break out right here, that's something that we just have to be aware of. So when I'm watching this, I'm not so much worried about the shorter time frames or even the short term price action. What I'm much more focused on is the fact that we have stacking one waves. These two stacking one waves, even if we come all the way back down to retest trending support, that gives everybody a better entry to get in. And at the same time, once these sort of moves take off, these are the most impulsive cycles that we're going to see. And I think layer twos are a big narrative to be watching out for. And the same reason I've been so big about Arbitrum and many of the ecosystem, uh, a lot of the same plays are going to be just as valuable inside of OP. So now is the time where we want to be researching, looking into these things and accumulating because these are the big ones that end up winning the most inside of an entire cycle. And so I would just be watching out for this one and continue to watch for the same pattern that I'm talking about, stacking one waves. These are gonna be some of the most profitable setups inside the entire market. Alrighty guys, so we're going back to XRP a little bit because the main reason, this is one of the old altcoins and I like talking about these because I do believe these are gonna be doing their own sort of thing in a much bigger way than they did in the last cycle. We can zoom out and we can see the entire price history and for me, it's obvious to tell that our entire last cycle for you know 2017 altcoins or at least 99% of them, almost all of them just finished a one wave and a two wave correction. That's all they've done up to this point. And so most people are writing them off because of the fact we didn't break all time highs because this was a lower high in comparison. But the truth of the matter is this, this is just the first impulse to the beginning of a cycle. And generally speaking, a one wave impulse doesn't break all time highs at the prior cycle. That's always the first impulse that takes place. It's the build up before the much bigger moves that end up happening where these things do go into new all time highs. And so that's what you're gonna see inside of a three wave impulse, right? This is a wave one, and then that's where you would see a wave three take off in the same way that it happened in our last cycle. It's the same setup all the way through. This 
was our first cycle and bear market. And then this was a one wave and a two wave correction, right? And so everybody, I remember, cause I was one of the few people that was around back in here and was watching these altcoins at that time. And I remember throughout this entirety, everybody was talking down on XRP and Ripple. At the time it was Ripple because of the fact it was the banker's coin, right? And so everybody said it was the worst thing ever and it also never moved, it just goes sideways, it was dead. That was a one wave and a two wave correction right before wave three came in and did that. And so I'm not expecting that our next cycle is gonna give us the same ROI as what 2016 and 2017 did, but it's the same setup. This was a one wave, this is a two wave, we're about to get wave three uh, and wave four next. And so I think that the way this cycle plays out, this cycle will be a wave three, we'll just get a great glorious you know, bull run, it'll be very, very profitable. And then the bear market will be our four wave correction to give you guys an idea of what that was in our 2017 cycle, it was this. This was our four wave, and then this was wave five, right? That was our blow off top right there. So inside of that last cycle, what I kind of think is happening, because our first, or what I should say, our last cycle was sh uh, so short lived, and because it only finished a one wave, our bear market was our wave two correction. And so I think that it's gonna happen in a similar way going into this bull run as well, where we're gonna have this cycle being wave three, it's gonna get very parabolic like what we saw in 2017, Wave four will be our bear market going into 2026. And then our final cycle will be a left translated cycle. It will top early, we'll front run the halving, and then that will lead us sometime into 2027 to 2028, midway uh, through 2028. That's what I'm actually anticipating. That's kind of the way that I'm thinking the cycles are gonna play out. And that's the reason why I believe that we saw such a smaller you know, parabolic cycle. Because it was the same time frames. it was just a much smaller you know, rally. And I think that that was the reason why. Now, when we're getting in here to the shorter time frames, I really love the setup for XRP, mainly because of the fact when we're looking at you know the last couple years of price action, we've already seen the breakout of descending resistance. We trimmed, uh, we trended sideways from that with the announcement of the SEC lawsuit, and with X or, or what I should say with Ripple actually winning that, we've corrected back down. We've actually retested um, that breakout point, and so I think that what comes next is just basically our next move that's going to be taking us upwards to this lower high being a dollar and 38 cents or what I should say a dollar and 33 cents or a dollar and 41 cents and that's kind of what I think is going to be taking place for XRP that's going to be what's taking place for even Litecoin some of those older altcoins that have been kind of doing this sort of price action have just barely been accumulating although I do think XRP is going to probably outperform those Maybe not Litecoin, because Litecoin just had its halving, so there's a fundamental news event and a narrative to push the price action, <clears throat> but XRP just won the lawsuit, so that's why I think that it has the opportunity of outperforming those 2017 altcoins, just because it's got a little bit more of a narrative attached to it. <clears throat> So I'm watching XRP. This is one of those that's been accumulating forever. Still firmly believe in it. Nothing has changed there. And I think that this one's getting ready to actually start breaking out. Now, kind of in the exact same analysis, we're gonna be looking at Bitcoin Cash again. And I know a lot of people are gonna be hating. I saw even in the comments section, uh, people were saying, man, if I ever signed up for your signals and I saw you post Bitcoin Cash, I would be so pissed. And it, it goes to show it's that exact thought process, that exact same emotional psychology that is why we're in the disbelief stage. It's the same reason why nobody thinks XRP is gonna do anything, but it is about to actually do a lot. Bitcoin Cash is in the exact same situation. There's not really any of a difference here. Now, we're gonna look at the total market cap just so I can go up and look at the entire price history, but this is exactly what I mean. All we've seen with many of these old, old, old altcoins has just been one of the longest sideways accumulations that we've ever seen. The amount of time that we've been in here is like I said, you know, 2000 days, give or take the altcoin. So Bitcoin Cash, it's it spent, you know, over 1600 days worth of accumulation and we're still sitting in here at over 1700 days. So everybody has written this stuff off and everybody has a bad attitude towards these altcoins. And most everybody thinks that they're never going to do anything again. But you guys got to keep in mind 
The XRP has more partnerships than almost any altcoin out there. Some of the very, very, very best partnerships, most key partnerships. And there's even talks of the FedNow partnership, how they're somehow incorporated with all of that. And to me, it's not just talks. There's a lot of tangibility behind all of that. And, you know, there's a reason why people are talking about it. There is a significant amount of value that is propping up many of these 2017 altcoins just because they didn't do anything in 20 uh in our last cycle in 2020 and 2021 almost everybody's written them off but we got to keep in mind guys that the people that are writing these off are the same people that have only been around for maybe half a cycle maybe one cycle at that and most of these people don't even know how to trade most of these people don't understand you know four-year cycles they don't understand time frames so Anytime we're hearing these sort of arguments, we got to remember that most every one of these arguments are backed to almost nothing. There's almost zero evidence backing any of this. And so I'm not trying to say that I'm some expert, I'm some genius. This is my seventh year in crypto, and this is my third cycle. And so I've made a million mistakes. That's the reason why I have been able to learn. And it's not that I'm any better than anybody else. It's not that I have some magic ingredient. I teach you guys what I know. I tell you guys what I know because I want everybody to make money. And at the end of the day, the people that make the most money are the ones that don't tell everybody how they do it. So I want everybody to make money. And I know that at the end of the day, I'm not some expert and I'm not some genius and I'm going to make more mistakes moving forward. But I can almost guarantee you guys, with as much confidence as I possess, which is much, with as much confidence as I guess you could have trading a financial market that nobody actually knows, I do think that these 2017 altcoins are setting up for something spectacular that is going to be rivaling 2017. And I've said that, I'm going to continue to say that, because every single one of these are awakening from the depths. What we're seeing right now with Bitcoin Cash, we just spent all of this time going sideways. We were sitting sideways right here near the all-time lows. This is still a higher high. We still have perfect Elliott waves in here. Wave one, wave three, wave four, and wave five. Every one of these is showing one wave impulses. They're not showing that they're dead and that they're going to nothing. They're showing one wave impulses. And we gotta keep in mind that this is one of the only altcoins that's available to trade on PayPal, that you can actually buy this on PayPal. So there's more going for this than arguably almost every altcoin out there. And people will fight me to the grave with that, but the people fighting me are people that don't know what they're talking about. So with us now seeing this first breakout, I think that we just finished wave one, this was wave three, and we're gonna get another wave five, probably up just to this uh, 7.45 billion level, but we could overextend all the way up here to the top of this B wave. I don't think that that's gonna happen in Bitcoin Cash, but anything is possible. For me, I'm anticipating 7.45 billion, and what we're looking at is just the beginning stages of impulses. You know, we might go for a big correction here where it does something like this, and we come all the way back down near those same all-time lows, and just go sideways forever before actually starting anything like that. But I'm telling you guys right now, that this is what is gonna be taking place and we are going to be breaking. We're gonna go well above and past this prior five wave. I think that we're gonna be rallying back up to those prior 2017 highs and many of these altcoins are gonna be breaking past those. Is it a given? No, not all of them, but I do think a lot of them will be because there's just gonna be significantly more money coming into this cycle. So anyways guys, I think I've summarized enough thoughts and perspectives, giving you guys a few different altcoins that I think are showing good setups in their own ways. Some of these that have you know, just been added to exchanges recently, some of these that haven't had prior cycles, as well as some of the old ones that are setting up in unique ways as well. Wanted to give you guys this update just as a way to you know, summarize thoughts. If you guys found value, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you guys wanna make sure you stay active to every single one of these updates right when I post them. If you guys wanna actually see how I'm investing my money, what I'm buying, what I'm selling, leverage positions and trades, and things like that. Links are in the description to go ahead and check out my signals. You can find that on my website. Thank you all so much for the support. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. As always, peace out.